you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer this question on your own first before listening on. The question presents us with a lot of information, but one of the most important pieces of information it gives us is the density of gold, which is given to us with this value right here. Now, we know that density is equal to mass divided by volume. Now, what we can talk about first is the volume of this object. What's going on here is an architect has a ceiling that is rectangularly shaped, and we know that its measurements are 100 feet by 81 feet. Now, in addition, we know that the paint is going to be five millionths of an inch thick. And so we can show the thickness of the paint by drawing it basically like, like a box, actually. And the thickness of this box or of this paint would be this dimension right here. And we can label that to be five millionths of an inch, since that's its thickness as stated in the question. Now, five millionths can be written as five divided by a million. Now, a million can be written as a one with six zeros, or we could actually back up and write it as 10 to the power of six. So that would be five millionths of an inch. And we'll notice that these units for the measurement of this box of paint are inconsistent. We have inches here and then feet and feet. And so we need to get those into consistent units. And one way of doing that is to convert the feet into inches. And so to do that, we can come over here and we'll note that one foot is equal to 12 inches. And so if we perform that conversion, we're going to see that the feet will cancel out and 100 times 12 is 1200. So we can actually label this side as being 1200 inches. And then similarly, we can convert the 81 feet into inches by multiplying it by 12. And when we do that, we get 972 inches. So now the units of the measurements of the box are all in inches. We can now calculate the volume of this box by noting that the volume would be equal to the length multiplied by the width multiplied by the height. And so we can go ahead and plug in the three measurements for length, width, and height. And then when we multiply those three measurements together, we should get 5.832. And then since we multiplied inches by inches by inches, we end up with inches raised to the third power. So this is the volume that we're going to need for our density equation over here. So we have the volume. The question gives us the density. We can now go ahead and calculate mass. The only problem, of course, is that the density is given in terms of grams per centimeter cubed, whereas we have a measurement of volume of inches cubed. And so that's going to be problematic. What we're going to need to do is convert the inches cubed into centimeters cubed. Now, if you open up your textbook or perhaps use Google to search for a conversion between inches and centimeters, you will learn that one inch is exactly 2.54 centimeters. Now, just be careful here, because we have inches cubed in our volume, whereas our conversion factor has only inches. So what you actually have to do is cube this entire quantity of 2.54 over one. That's gonna change the centimeters into centimeters cubed. It also changes the inches into inches cubed. And so in fact, we can rewrite it in the following way, where we have separately cubed the one, which stays as one, and then we're gonna cube the 2.54. So we'll go ahead and punch this into our calculator. The inches cubed will cancel. And when you do type that into your calculator, you should get about 95.569 centimeters cubed. This is the correct volume that we're going to be plugging in to our density formula over here. And then we'll also plug in the density itself. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we have the density on the left side and we've plugged in the volume. We want to solve this for the mass. And one way of doing that is to multiply both sides of the equation by this 95 centimeters cubed. We'll do it on the left side as well. On the right side, those values will cancel, and that's going to leave us with just the mass. And then over here, we're going to multiply these two numbers together. Notice that the centimeters cubed in the numerator here will cancel with the centimeters cubed in the denominator here. That's going to leave us with just grams. So let's multiply those two numbers. 
and we end up with 1,846.4, roughly, grams is our mass. Now we just need to change this mass into a cost. And that will require some dimensional analysis. So let's go ahead and set up a couple of conversions here. For the first one, we are told that a troy ounce is this number of grams right here. So we can write one troy ounce, which we can just abbreviate T Oz, is equivalent to 31.1034768 grams. And by setting up the conversion in this manner, the grams are going to cancel out, leaving us with troy ounces. Next, we were told that the cost of gold is $953 per troy ounce. So we can say that $953 is equivalent to one troy ounce. And by setting the conversion up in this manner, the troy ounces will cancel, leaving us with a unit of dollars. Now we can finally pick up our calculators and work this all out. Make sure you enclose these quantities in parentheses when you punch them into your calculator. And when you type that all in, you should get about $56,573 very expensive ceiling. And if you need to round that to any number of sig figs, you can do so. For example, if we needed to round it to one sig fig, we would note that this number would round up to just $60,000. So that would be to one sig fig, which you can actually write as six times 10 to the power of one, two, three, four. So this would be the final answer if you were required to put it into one sig fig. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you could stay tuned for additional videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen and I'll do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.